Today, I'm revealing my entire $50,000 high growth stock portfolio. And since my last portfolio reveal, this portfolio has grown by over $18,000. I sold a stock, bought two new stocks, and doubled my position in another stock. So lots happened. I've been gone for a minute, but let's do it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew. Welcome back to my channel. And today, we are talking all things growth stocks. I'm thinking about making this a weekly or maybe bi-weekly series, so if you want that to happen, let me know in the comments below, but we have a lot to get through today, so let's get started right away. All these stocks are in order of my biggest holding down to my smallest holding, and we'll go down one by one. This column is the market value, this is how much I paid for each share, and this is the percentage of the account that each stock accounts for. Now this account has grown by over $18,000 since my last portfolio reveal. About $10,000 of that is from me putting in new cash because I'm consistently trying to grow this account. About six dollars to $7,000 of that is from unrealized gains and about $1,000 is from realized gains after selling my shares in Hylion. And I'll explain exactly why I sold my Hylion shares in this video, so stick around. Today we have a new biggest position in this account. It is no longer Levon Gaines, it is CrowdStrike, ticker symbol CRWD. We have 41 shares of CrowdStrike in this account. We're up about 14% on those shares after getting them for about $127 each, and CrowdStrike makes up about 11% of this account. Keeping it brief, CrowdStrike is a leading cloud cybersecurity company and recurring revenue beast. Some quick highlights include the fact that CrowdStrike is thriving under the Roni Rona, not just because it's a cloud company and they're all doing well, but because customers often save money on IT spending if they switch to CrowdStrike because Crowd consolidates many cybersecurity services into one vendor instead of several. They should be hitting $1 billion in annual recurring revenue within a few years, thanks to their subscription-based business model. They have absolutely no debt, and as pointed out by one of the members in our Discord community, they're positioning themselves to be the de facto app store of sorts in cybersecurity. They're definitely considered expensive by traditional metrics, but I'm fairly certain that CrowdStrike will grow into these valuations and then some. I made this my new biggest position in this account because my conviction for this stock has never been higher as I continue to do my due diligence. This is the stock I'm picking to play the cloud mega trend. Our next stock is none other than Levon Gaines, baby. We have 38 shares in this account. We got those for about 76.64 per share. This makes about 10% of the account, and we're up a whopping 85% on those shares. And fun fact, I think we're up over 100% on the Levongo shares in my Roth IRA account, which I might reveal soon, so make sure you subscribe. Livongo is a telehealth provider for chronic illness that changes the game with their AI and intimate patient care. I've talked about this stock so many times on this channel that I'll just say this. Yes, I think if and when we find an effective vaccine, telehealth companies won't see such explosive growth as they have recently. But I think it would be silly to think telehealth traffic would go back to pre-Roni levels. Telehealth is going mainstream. The Roni Rona just helped the industry jump several years into the future. For this reason, I would really like to increase my position size, seeing as I only put in about $3,000 on my initial investment. We will revisit Livongo later in this video when we talk about one of my newer positions. Stock number three, our third biggest position in this account right now with freshly minted all-time highs, Square stock. We have 29 shares of Square in this account. We got them for an average of about $132 a share. This makes up 10% of our portfolio, and we're currently up 40% on those shares. Square is trying to revolutionize the banking industry with their small business operations on the business side and digital wallet ecosystem on the consumer side. Personally, I'm not too comfortable buying at these all-time highs. I could definitely see it coming back to at least 160 per share, but at the same time, I was able to scoop up some shares on the recent dip we had in the 140s. Our stock number four is Maxer Technologies, ticker symbol MAXR. We have about 175 shares in this account. We're up about 60% on the, okay, that's not 60, 57% on those shares. We got them for an average of $18.72, and this makes up just shy of 10% of the growth account. Maxer is a satellite infrastructure and earth intelligence company, and they are the comeback kid. They are an undervalued growth stock. Long story short, the company was crushed in late 2017, both in stock price and with debt. But get this, since new management stepped in and Daniel Jablonski took the reins in January 2019, the stock is up over 390%. They have a plan that they're executing to get rid of their debt. 
they're changing their business model to have a heavier mix of software and recurring revenue rather than hardware. And in 2021, they're launching the Worldview Legion satellite, which will give Maxers Constellations so many more use cases. I recently increased my position on Maxer on the recent dip and I got them for around $24 a share. Now they're close to $30 a share and this is definitely one of my highest conviction stocks but we're still in speculative territory if you're being conservative. Stock number five is a stock that so many people slept on. It's Upwork, ticker UPWK. We have 250 shares of Upwork in this account. We're up almost 38% on those shares. We got them for an average of $14.42, and this makes up just shy of 9.5% in this account. This stock has been on an absolute tear this past month, but it is still trading just under its IPO price. I have personally used Upwork before. I have been their customer and it's extremely effective and efficient as a service. But I'm also not their primary customer. In fact, their biggest customers are enterprises. And yes, they are still losing money, but the fact remains that they have an incredible balance sheet with over $140 million in cash and $318 million in current assets and only $182 million in current liabilities, meaning they have a current ratio of about 1.75. And remember, to slow things down, anything above one usually indicates good near-term financial health. And according to their last earnings call, project sizes held steady through Q2 and higher value clients continue to be very active on the platform. And right now I've decided to explain why I decided to sell my shares of Hylion. I sold my entire Hylion position on September 28th, the day of the merger vote, for $51.24 per share. To be clear, I think Hylion is still a great business and I do still believe in the company over the long term or at least over the next few years, but let's get into this. I might receive some hate from this in the comments, but to be honest guys, I've been a bit on edge about the concept of an EV bubble forming in our markets today. A very good comparison in my opinion is MJ stocks in 2018. Anything remotely related to MJ in 2018 skyrocketed, much like anything related to EVs in today's market. Now of course I can't say this and not give you guys examples. Here's Canopy Growth, up 165% in 2018, Aurora, up 362% in 2018, and Tilray, up 388% in 2018. Well, since their 2018 peaks, Canopy Growth is down over 60%, Aurora is down over 96%, and Tilray is also down about 96%. Now this isn't really to scare anyone, it's more of just maybe a reality check or to draw some comparisons, some food for thought. Hylion has always been a spec play for me, and I think I made that very clear from the beginning. That's why I only bought 36 shares, and I never saw it as developing into a pillar of my portfolio like Facebook or CrowdStrike or Livongo. And side note, because this position is so small, it wouldn't make sense for me to trim this position and keep the rest. For example, if I wanted to trim 60% of my Hylion position, that would leave me with a disproportionately small $750 position in a $50,000 growth account, and at that point, it would just become sort of a distraction for me. So I decided to sell all of it. Additionally, I was up over 160% in a matter of months. I was expecting to hold Hylion for at least one to two years and maybe get an 80% return or double my money. I got double that in half the time. And if I'm being honest with myself, could I justify a 160% run up and over $1 billion valuation solely based on their fundamentals? I could not. To me, it felt like the stock was being heavily controlled by traders and heavily propelled by hype. Everywhere I looked, on all these message boards, people were talking about how the ticker change from SHLL to HYLN would send the stock skyrocketing, so they were buying in before. They talked about how when Nikola changed tickers, it skyrocketed in price, so Hylion should do the same thing. I have two problems with this. One, I'm not really comfortable using Nikola as a reliable example and any part of a bull thesis, and we all know how Nikola ended up. And two, in my opinion, a catalyst is something tangible that actually affects the fundamentals or reveals more about the fundamentals of a company. For example, an earnings report, a new product release, or a satellite launch, anything like that. A ticker change, in my opinion, has nothing to do with fundamentals and should not be defined as a catalyst. So I decided not to wait for the ticker change because it didn't make sense to me how SHLL was less appealing of an investment than the letters HYLN. And finally, Hylion was always going to be a one to two year hold for me. I saw it as a great transition or stepping stone from ICE engines to fully electric engines for semi trucks. However, that timeline was pushed up when it jumped 160%. This merger gave me an opportunity to quote, buy the rumor and sell the news. In this case, I bought early, I let the rumor run up the price 160%, and then I ended up selling on the news of the vote on the merger. 
I'm really sorry I couldn't get you guys a video on this when I was deciding to make this move back in September 28th, but to be completely transparent, I needed a break from YouTube, both mentally and creatively in terms of content creation. However, I do always post my buys and sell alerts in real time for all my top tier patrons. So if you don't already know, we have a really awesome Discord community linked in the description below. Not only do we talk about stocks and joke around with each other every day, but it's also where I share my buy sell alerts in real time, where other members share their well-constructed bull or bear theses on stocks, and where we just have a genuinely good, valuable conversation. No fluff, just knowledge. And here's the actual buy sell alert that I sent out on the 28th. So if you think it'd be valuable to you, you can check out that link in the description below. Now hang in there, we haven't revealed the two new positions in this portfolio yet. Stock number six, like Square, also recently minted some fresh all-time highs and that is the Trade Desk, ticker symbol TTD. We only have seven shares of Trade Desk in this account. We got them for about $419 a share. It makes up 8% of our portfolio and we're up 47% on those shares with a current stock price of almost $620. If you want in on the advertising industry or the streaming wars, then the Trade Desk is the stock for you. You see, they specialize in programmatic advertising, which means all of those creepy ads that seem scarily specific to you, well, the Trade Desk probably had a hand in putting those there. And when it comes to the streaming wars, 59% of Americans said they wouldn't pay more than $20 for streaming services combined, and 75% said they wouldn't pay more than $30. The industry leader, Netflix, already charges $13 a month, which leaves only about $7 a month until people start deciding which streaming service to pledge their allegiance to. For streaming services, their alternative is just to be free and play ads like Hulu. And can you guess who helps put those ads there? I'll give you a hint, the trade desk. That wasn't really a hint, that was just the answer. Now, if you know me, you know I'm a huge fan of analogies, so let me throw one at you guys. During the gold rush, there were thousands of miners competing against one another to find gold. But the first millionaire of the gold rush was not a miner. It was a man named Sam Brannon who didn't mine at all. He sold the tools to the miners. Sam Brannon never had to shovel a single pan, but he made a fortune selling the means to try and find gold. Well, today, Hulu, Netflix, Disney+, Plus, Peacock, they're all miners going for the gold. Companies like Roku and the Trade Desk are simply providing the tools for them. So rather than betting on which streaming service will strike it richest and find gold, I'm betting on Sam Brannon. But uh, don't look into the rest of his life because it honestly wasn't great, but you get the point. Anyways, stock number seven is Facebook, ticker symbol FB. We have 12 shares of Facebook in this account. We're up 13% on those shares. We got them for an average of $232 a share, and this makes up about 6% of our portfolio. Everyone knows this stock. It's a must have in any of my personal portfolios. Check out this video for a super detailed breakdown of my bullish thesis for Facebook and why I think it's a buy and hold forever. I think it's still undervalued, especially compared to the rest of the FANG stocks. And one of the biggest pieces of news recently surrounding Facebook is not their recent antitrust threat, but actually that Mark Zuckerberg tweeted saying everyone should smash the like button on this video from Matthew Woe because he is cool and I made the like button. But seriously, even seemingly simple videos like this do take a long time to research, record, and edit, so I'd really appreciate it if you guys could just smash that thumbs up for me. Thank you so much. Stock number eight is NEO, ticker NEO. <laughs> we have 145 shares of NEO in this account. We got them for an average cost of $11.80. It makes up about 6% of our portfolio and we're up a whopping 82% on this position. Boy, do I wish I grabbed some more of this one, but hindsight is always 2020. Some quick bullet points for this one. There's still a spec play in my book, but they have the support of the Chinese government who will not let NEO fail. I'm fairly certain of this. They're successfully building a luxury lifestyle, not just a luxury car, which I really like. They have an incredibly promising battery as a service business unit that they are building out, which could be massive for the future, and their delivery numbers continue to impress. Neo is definitely a keeper here and I would like to add some more, but speaking of that whole EV bubble concept I just talked about earlier, that has me a little cautious. Stock number nine is Mercado Libre, ticker symbol Melly. We only have two shares in this account because their stock is a little expensive at $1,100 each. Market cap is a different story. It makes up 4.5% of the growth account and we're up over 7% on this position. 
Mercado Libre is like an Amazon online storefront, Square's cash app, and Square's small business operations all bundled up into one company for Latin America. Now I'm kind of in an awkward position with this stock because after further diligence, it looks like the political climate in Latin America is a tad concerning for this investment. One stock that I like just as much as Meli, if not more, is C Limited, ticker symbol SE, which is based in Southeast Asia. Ideally, I'd only want to own one of these stocks, either Melly or C Limited, but not both, and that's just for personal diversification reasons. For now, I've just kind of held on to Mercado Libre because I do like the stock, and if it's making us money, there's no reason to kick it to the curb just yet. I might actually just transfer it into a different account, kick it out of this account, and build out C Limited. Stock number 10 is Shopify. We're almost there. Ticker symbol SHOP. We have two shares of Shopify in this account because it is also a little pricey in terms of stock price. It makes up just over 4% of this account and we're up 35% on those shares. This is another one that I think needs no introduction. The stock doesn't care what its valuation is and because of that, I'm not going to be touching this one at these prices, but I'm definitely not going to be selling this one at these prices. It's hard for me to make a good call on this one, whether to buy, sell, or hold, because the stock is so forward looking, and that's just a nice way of saying overvalued. What I do know is that this company is a long term winner, and the stock should be no different. They serve everyone from small businesses to the world's largest corporations, and they're a leader in the e commerce megatrend. Stock number 11 is Virgin Galactic, ticker symbol SPCE. We have 100 shares of Virgin Galactic in this account. We're up over 20% on those shares, actually a little bit more because we didn't get these for 1812. We actually got them in the $16 range. But when I transfer this into this account, for some reason it changed. You can believe me or not. It's okay either way. It makes up about 4% of this portfolio. Space is on another one of its crazy runs. This space tourism stock is up over 36% over the past couple of weeks. But this happens all the time. We saw it hit 25 just a couple of months ago and come back down all the way to the 16s. And here we are again. This could be because of the hype for their upcoming space test flight. But honestly, I'm not sure that space can sustain these prices until we see their first real commercial flight. But if that goes well, you better hope you have some shares. All right, guys, we're dang close now. The second to last stock in this portfolio and our first new addition to be revealed, Teladoc, ticker TDOC. This is a very recent addition to the portfolio. We bought seven shares and an average cost of $199. I really wanted to get under $200 just for that flex, you know, and this makes up about 3% of the portfolio. We're up over 11% on this one here. I recently did an entire video dedicated to this stock and you can check it out right there. And the reason I bought Teladoc and not Livongo is because at this point, it's pretty much guaranteed that the merge is going to go through. After all, it is unanimously recommended by both sides. Existing Livongo shareholders will receive 0.592 shares of Teladoc for each share of Livongo that they own, as well as $11.33 in cash per share of Livongo. So again, it doesn't really make sense at this point to buy Livongo if it's just going to be converted into cash and shares later on. So with this new addition to the portfolio, I was able to bring up my total invested money in telehealth as an industry to about $4,400. I would like that number to get closer to 10,000 over time, slowly but surely. Our 13th and final stock and also our second new stock to the portfolio to be revealed is C Limited, ticker symbol SE. We have eight shares of C Limited in this account. We're up 16% on those shares. We got them for an average of a 146.50 and it makes up just over two and a half percent of the growth portfolio. This diagram here is probably the best way to describe C Limited in a quick digestible fashion. C Limited has a hand in gaming with Garena, e-commerce with Shopee, and these two are both perfectly integrated with C Limited's very own fintech initiative, C Money. Remember how I was considering replacing Melly with C Limited? Well, like Melly, C Limited is based in an underbanked population ripe for innovation and mass adoption of new technologies. Southeast Asia. Now again, I'm kind of in a weird position with these two stocks, Melly and C Limited. With Melly, we have political unrest and uncertainty, and it's not a fully built out position yet, but I still like the company, and it's up about 7%. With C Limited, I'm already up 16%, and I didn't really get to build out this position much before it ran away, so now we're kind of in this waiting game, or more like no man's land. 
Whatever I end up doing, I will keep you guys posted. So that is my entire gross stock portfolio. We're up 36.69% since June 16th. I'm extremely happy with that performance. We're doing very well so far, but I do realize something has to give at some point. So of course, we're being very strategic, cautious, and that's why you have to invest in really strong, fundamentally strong companies. Because if things do go south, we want them to be able to survive. Feel free to check out our Discord community and my buy sell alerts in the first link in the description below. And if you think I'm wrong and you think we're not in an EV bubble, please comment down below. Let me know why. I would love to hear all of your opinions. I hope you guys enjoyed the new background. I am not changing it again, no matter what you guys say in those comments. And I just realized that I did not change the quote of the day from the last video. But on a sincere note, you guys showed a lot of support on my community posts when I talked about why I was stepping away from YouTube for just a couple of weeks, and I sincerely appreciate all of your kind words. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. If you found any value in this video, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and make sure to check out our quote of the day, which hasn't changed from the last video. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for daily posts about my portfolio, things I'm watching, and all that good stuff. And if you're still watching at this point in the video, you are the real MVP. Don't forget your peace. And thank yous.